So as y'all can see from the title, we are talking about this episode of The Shy. Low key, the episode I've been waiting on just because of one uh, storyline in particular, but we'll get into that in a second. But before we really get into the show, a couple things. One, it is getting ready to rain. It's been raining off and on all day. So you might hear some thunder, some rain. I can't control that, obviously. I'm sorry. Hopefully it's not too, too bad. And also... <laughs> your girl's voice is kind of going in and out just because you know over the weekend Beyonce dropped her renaissance album I've been screaming I've been dancing I've been twerking I've been memorizing lyrics and shouting them so my voice is like girl me doing this video right now was like ma'am <laughs> okay and I still have another video to do about the whole renaissance album and my thoughts and things like that so be gonna look out for that as well so just know that your girl I'm trying I'm trying okay <laughs> but anyway so if you have not seen this episode I would say pause this go watch it and come back because y'all know I don't do spoiler free but if you're still here hey y'all make sure you like comment subscribe hit the bell so you're notified when I drop a video get your snacks get your drinks prop your feet up and let's get it let's go so y'all know how I do I don't go in any particular order I just go storyline by storyline character by character so it can flow easily but let's just talk about the way the episode started off in general child everybody just bumping and grinding doing the sex sexies I was like we don't just say hey welcome to the show no more huh we just in their bedrooms and they just doing they thing i'm not mad because i was watching um so we got tiff and rob doing their thing keisha and emmett jada and darnell and trick victor and fatima okay so i'm just gonna start off with keisha emmett tiff and rob this is a storyline that i was waiting on to just to see how it was all gonna play out right so after you know keisha and emmett do what they do they sitting on the couch and they're just basically trying to establish okay what are we are we moving forward with the relationship are we just hooking up like what do you want from this and they both agree that the love they have for each other never went away they still care for each other they've been with each other through all the ups and the downs our kids love each other they love you know us we should be together. I want to be with you. You know, so they solidified that, right? And Keisha said the funniest thing. She was like, between the two of us, we got four kids. And I was like, yep, and three of them his. So let's, let's talk about it, okay? But he was like, you know, Ronnie's like my son anyway. My children love and respect you. It's a blended family anyway. So we're going to make it work. We're going to be there for each other. We're going to hold it down. And so they're cool. They smooch it. And then she's like, oh, snap we got to tell Tiffany that we're together. And Emmett doesn't feel like they need to just because Tiffany's moved on. She's moved in with some other dude and things like that and didn't really tell him all that she was doing. So he doesn't feel like he owes, you know, he uh, owes her that respect or not respect, but that conversation of letting her know that, hey, me and Keisha are back together. But Keisha thinks that, you know, they should, obviously. So he gets to work and child, guess who was there after a month of Sundays? Dom, I said, girl, who are you in the kitchen? Who who are you? We have not seen you. And then she gonna talk about some, oh, look who finally decided to show up to work. I hope you're talking about yourself, Miss Mamas, because we not have seen you, Lala. Hey, girl. <laughs> but he's like, man, I'm in a rough situation right now because she can tell something's bothering him. So he's like, I'm in a rough situation. It's kind of sticky. It's a little bit messy. And I don't even know if you can handle it right now. And because of Dom's absence up until this point, we've all kind of had questions like, okay, are her and Darnell still together? Did they break up? Does she know about Darnell and Jada? Like, is she in the loop about anything? Like, we just don't know. So she was like, listen, dog, can't nothing be messier than you sleeping with me, then proposing to Tiffany and me getting with your daddy and him breaking up with me to get back with your mama can't nothing be messier i was like oh so you know everything okay great so he basically explains to her that you know him and keisha are back together and she's like oh yeah y'all do need to tell tiffany and he does he still doesn't see why he feels like if he doesn't have that conversation that's less drama that he'll bring into his relationship with keisha but she's trying to get him to understand the longer you go without saying anything the bigger the issue will be so it's best to go ahead and tell her now catch the strays that come along with that the cussing outs the name calling whatever get that out the way right now so that way later on down the line it's all said and done so he goes to uh Keisha's dorm and says hey we do need to tell Tiff so he does that or they set that up right so switching gears to Tiff and Rob for a second as they do what they're doing I forgot okay because we've only seen thus far we've seen them in more of a romantic aspect instead of a business partner relationship right because they started off as business partners so she feels like she doesn't have as much independence she's not really kept in the loop with all the like you know weed supplying and all that other type of stuff so she's like you know I feel like I'm working for you and not with you so I want to meet your supplier I want to know who the plug is and at first he's kind of reluctant because you know he likes to be uh, he adds in the plug. He likes to be discreet, doesn't really want his name out there too much. But then he sees how important it is to her. So he's like, okay, I'll set it up for you. So she's kind of taken aback by it, but okay. So 
they set that up okay so she gets there it's like a little hush hush underground place and she <laughs> chill i'm like tiffy you was too pretty for this you you just let him ha let rob handle the the dirty work okay this is you just keep doing what you're doing, baby girl. Because she goes in there and takes off her coat. So are you the plug? Are you the man I need to be talking to? Tiffany, wait. Wait. Now, I don't know nothing about no drugs. I don't know how this whole operation. I don't know nothing about that, okay? But I know you don't just go up in the secretive hush-hush place talking about something. So where's the plug? Are you the plug? You right here. Do you supply the weed? <laughs> and he said, hold up. Hey. He called some people over there and they got to frisking my sis, checking her for wires. Because you don't just yell that type of stuff out like you ain't gotta be a part of it to know that's not that's not what you do tiffany so she's like now wait a minute okay so as they're talking and she realizes that he's not the main person he's the person that you got to get through to get to the main person right so as they're talking i just kept staring at his face because i'm like i should know who this is i should know who this is right because duh i'm like who is this he's not a new person who is it and my mind was just blank i have no idea why and then it's not until she got to the car back to rob and you know she was upset that they frisked her and you know she felt it was dangerous and things like that and then she tells him and that's the dude that you know was the whole reason why keisha got kidnapped and right when she said it i was like nuck dang so he was like what are you talking about so she basically explains how keisha was at that bus stop that night to go see nug and that's where she got kidnapped and things like that so while they're talking Emmett calls Tiff to tell her hey you need to come over we need to talk it's an emergency it's something serious that involves all of us I need you here ASAP so she gets to Smokey's and she's like why am I here why are we not at your place or my place like why are we here he was like I need witnesses <laughs> basically he's like i wanted to have this conversation in a public place because he knows if he was just alone in his house or whatever and broke the news yeah the news wasn't gonna be the only thing that got broken okay so basically she uh he tells her that you know him and keisha want to be together that they are advancing in their relationship and she is highly upset and i knew it i knew she was i would have been more surprised if she was like okay whatever you know like she was nonchalant when keisha asked her so if Emmett decided to move on, would you care? A couple of episodes ago. And she was like, I don't care, I moved on. But that's because she's not expecting the person that's asking her that to be the person that he'll be moving on with, you know what I'm saying? So, and I've been saying this whole time, look at my reviews, it hurts more because of who Keisha is to both of them. Not only is Keisha now one of her closest friends, her best friends, she's also his ex, someone that he already has history with, you know what I'm saying? And so if Keisha was some random person, or even if she was the same person, but had no relationship with Tiffany, it wouldn't hurt as much. But the fact that, oh, you're going back to your ex, so did you want her the whole time and you settled for me? And then the other part of it is the girl code part. Oh, so we've established a friendship, a close bond. I've been telling this girl what's going on with you and our marriage and things like that. And, you know, so now she's looking at Keisha like, so you knew I was going through stuff with him. And were you plotting the whole time? Like, her emotions are all over the place. So she is highly upset, okay? Some people feel like she doesn't have a reason to be upset. And I'm just like, it's the girl code part. Like, it's just the girl code part. And plus him going back to his ex. It's like, okay, you know, dang it. That's the girl that you've been wanting the whole time, right? So she gets up to leave. And then y'all remember the very first episode of the season when he had that dream that him and Keisha, you know, were doing something and she woke him up. And she thinks back to that morning she's like so when i woke you up that morning because you was having a sex dream were you thinking about keisha and he said nothing but the fact that he said nothing said a lot so she's just hurt okay so keisha's trying to get in contact with her i don't know i can't remember if emmett was trying to but they both know that she is pissed okay so do y'all think she has a right to be pissed and also while she was over at rob's place she was really quiet he was trying to figure out what's going on and she told him and rob is like okay <coughs> why are you mad you know and she's like uh that's one of my best friends you know that's my soon-to-be ex-husband are you not connecting the dots like why are you not on my side about this and he's like that's just too much drama you can tell rob you can tell iman shumper in real life is like this but rob's character is very nonchalant like stuff that would probably bother the average person he's just like okay because he's like you know maybe keisha's good for him you know i know that sucks and love hurts but let them be happy over there like we happy over here so let them be happy. And I know it sucks because of the person that he's going back to, but you know, and what's really interesting, if you noticed, Rob and Keisha both said the same thing, you know, about 
one another. I think, yeah, about one another to, you know, the person that they're with. So when Keisha and Emma were having their discussion about, you know, telling Tiffany the truth about them, you know, uh, Emmett was like, oh, he's just some random dude. He's whatever. And Keisha was like, he might be good for her. I mean, I've met him. He's cool. He might be the one for her. And that's ultimately what uh, Rob said about Keisha. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it hurts. But, you know, it just may play out that way. So that's giving Tiffany something to think about. So... Uh, do y'all think Tiffany has a right to be upset after all the things that they've been going through? Like, do y'all think she should be mad at Keisha? Do y'all think Keisha's wrong? Like, what do y'all think about? Like, that's the storyline that has been sparring a lot of opinions and things like that and a whole bunch of discussions. So now I'm going to get to Jada and Darnell real quick. Um, Again, we see them in the beginning doing their thing. And I was like, mm, I don't know. You know what it is about me and in regards to their relationship? It's not the fact that I don't like them together. It's, it's the fact that they're together. <laughs> I know I just like contradicted myself, but meaning when they weren't together and you could tell that there was something there. I don't know. I like that, you know, that fire, that tension. Like, I know you want me. Ooh, we kissing, but we can't do it. Ooh, I like that. Now that they're together, <laughs> it's like, oh, y'all together together. So there's no more like friskiness or not friskiness but like tension I, I i guess i just missed the tension between them like when they weren't together but you could tell that there was something there now they're back together it's like well all right okay nothing to be lustful for i guess <laughs> but after that they're in bed talking and he wants to take their relationship to a new level and move in together split the bills you know that type of thing and she's like you know that's what sway wanted before we broke up i'm not sure if i'm really ready for that right now and you know the next man that's gonna be living with me gonna have to be my husband husband so what said you and he said uh -huh. and she's like that's what I thought so later on <clears throat> she's in the kitchen and he's getting ready to go and he's feeling really being short with her and just leaving without saying anything and she's like hold up what we ain't gonna do is go through this cycle of us breaking up having an argument having sex getting back together you know this whole cycle He's like, okay, I agree with you. But I've been taking you out on all these dates and I want to get taken out too. So take a brother out on a date. So she's like, okay, I can do that. So she surprises him on a date to like a um, Chicago stepping club lounge. You know, they have a good old time and they're just talking, you know, just advancing in their relationship, child. I, don't, I think it's just that one little thing. The fact that there's no, there's nothing to, to progress. I don't know. I don't know how to word it. Y'all know what I mean, like those episodes where you could tell they still wanted each other, but nothing happened, but it was like, ooh, it was about to happen. Now that they're together, it's like, dang, am I a perv? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so now we got the kids, okay? So Kev is chilling with Simone in his room, and she's doing like her astrology, pick a card, any card. He's like, I told you I'm not into this. Like, please leave me alone. And so... He gets a text message basically inviting him to like this uh, secret gamer society. You know, y'all play for money and things like that. So he wants her to come and she's like, I'm not really into that. I was like, Simone, he wasn't into dressing up like Rain Man, but y'all won the couple's costume contest. Say that three times fast. So, <laughs> you know, but she's like, okay, but I see how important it is to you. And in order for me to get to know you, I have to, you know, get into the things that you're into so okay so he ends up going there i'm not sure if she was there or because i didn't see her i don't know if she had to wait in the parking lot i don't know but he gets there and get his little qr code scan i said oh, okay and so he gets there he meets the guy i guess that's hosting it or inviting him and he's like so you got your money like are you here and he's like oh you take cash you know and the dude's like oh we only do cryptocurrency Kevin was like no one told me that. I, I didn't know. So I guess the guy kind of pays his way in for him. But the only thing is, you better not lose because this is my money that's on the table here, okay? So Kevin's making his rounds, playing the video games. He's doing really well. You know, the people are checking him out like, okay, he's pretty good. Then he gets to one video game and he's like, oh, that looks cool. I call next. So I guess the main guy, he's like, oh, no, 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 little one. Okay, you got to work your way up to this level. No one plays me on their first night don't you know kevin get to cussing who the f you supposed to be i said kevin you just got your qr code scan baby you don't just go cussing out folks you don't just do that but instead of getting because that could have been a real issue it could have went way left but they was like okay let's see what you got baby no longer than when kevin sat down did he lose i said now see kevin baby this is why we just work our way up he he told you that no one plays on the first night baby 
<laughs> like, I don't know why you didn't grasp that concept. Baby, as soon as Kev sat down, it said, knocked out, you lost. I said, baby, just go. It's all right. You'll have your turn, but just go, okay? So he hugs the guy. He's like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I said, Kevin, it's your first night. You don't even know these people's names. It's okay, though. So I'm guessing like the next day or that night, you know, him and Simone come in the house. And we see Lene after forever. Not sure where Nina... Listen, Nina and Dre have just... Did they move? Like, where are they? Okay. So we see Lene after a few episodes of not seeing her. And she sees Simone and Kevin. She's like, hey. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. So they're kind of whispering and talking about things. And she, and Lene kind of wants to know what they're talking about. And uh, Simone's like, oh, she can't know because it's a secret. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, Kevin's like, yeah, you're right. And Lene is like, now, how come? she knows but i can't know oh that's right because y'all are glued at the hip y'all can't be separated and they're like that's not true and she's like yeah it is i barely see you anymore bye and she storms upstairs and i was like oh and i didn't take that as her being jealous because he's dating someone you know like from a i have a crush on you standpoint i don't think it's that i think she's really uh kind of um how can I say it? I like, kind of accepted the role of being like his sister and kind of looking at looking at it from that standpoint. So I didn't take it as, oh, I'm jealous of your girlfriend because I like you. I didn't take it as that. It could be, but I didn't take it as that. I saw it as a sister being upset that her brother isn't hanging out with her more since he got a girlfriend. So hopefully we see them hanging out, just the two of them, you know, things like that. Who else, child? Oh, Maisha and Gemma, of course. Again, like I've been saying these past few episodes, I adore their friendship. I'm just a girly girl. I just love friendship. And again, we know how these two were not rocking with each other in the beginning when we first met Gemma. So to see how far they've come and how supportive they are for one another, it's amazing. So, you know, Maisha's playing her music for Gemma. Gemma's giving her some good feedback and really wants to help elevate her in her career. She's like, now I've got to uh, book you some gigs and stuff like that so Gemma really believes in Maisha she really supports her believes that she can go far with her music and wants her to push herself and things like that so it's good Maisha has somebody you know to see her in that way in that creative way and also Maisha being a very good support system for Gemma while she's going through this you know troubling time you know trying to do with her pregnancy and making a decision and things like that so it's really good to see them you know both have a shoulder on each other to lean on so I love that and then uh, I'm kind of skipping around a little bit because Jake's storyline kind of ties with Triggs a little bit and I got to go back. But anyway, so Jake, you know, at Triggs, uh, Trig Victor's campaign, I told you I'm going to start calling him Trig Victor because I ain't got time to be trying to switch over names. So Trig Victor, you know, he's having his campaign event and stuff like that. And during the event, um, Jake is talking to their mom and she's and he's like, you know, I have a secret. Gemma is pregnant. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what Gemma wants to do. And I haven't told Trig Victor just yet. I started to, but then I kind of, you know, got scared because I don't want him to be mad at me. And, you know, his mom, you know, reassures him that, listen, you're going to be a great parent, better than I was to y'all, but you have to tell Trig Victor the truth. So he tries to tell Trig Victor the truth, but Trig Victor, how many times am I going to say Trig Victor? Okay. He tells his brother, <laughs> he, he tries to tell his brother, you know, what's going on, but uh, his mind is so wrapped up in this campaign and you know what just happened prior he's just not trying to hear it right now so Jake doesn't get the chance to tell him so now we're gonna go to Trig Victor, Tracy, Roslyn, Fatima, Tia all these grown people okay so Trig Victor and Fatima another couple that we saw in the beginning bumping and grinding and afterwards after their little session Fatima's smoking a joint or whatever and you know Trig Victor's getting ready for church <laughs> it, that whole concept like that whole sentence was wild okay smoking a joint she's getting ready for church he's like you won't have me uh, smell like smoke in the church house I was like well this, this what you get okay this what you get but anyway so Fatima's like I'm starting to feel like a mistress like how much longer are we going to be a secret how much longer are you going to keep me a secret like how much longer are you going to keep your sexual preference a secret like what's going on and my thing with Fatima and I was trying my best not to get to this mindset about her I don't know if we can trust her I'm so sorry if it comes out that we can trust her then I will apologize but up until then I don't know if we can trust Fatima because girl why are you why why just why now technically like I've been saying 
Trick Victor isn't necessarily cheating on Sierra because what they're doing is for show, you know? But to the community, to the public, to the people he's trying to get votes from and to the social media world because they're posting pictures every day, they look like they're in an actual relationship. They're a real couple to them. So he can't just pop out with you like, hey, this is my boo thing right here. Okay, so what about Sierra? She just calls your love of her life at the press conference. So what's going on? You're cheating? You're a two-timer? You you like having threesomes? Like, what you doing? Okay, so it's going to look real shady, real crooked to the community. And when it comes to like his sexual orientation, his sexual preference and relationships and stuff like that, not that he should hide it and nor should he hide the person that he's with you know absolutely not trans women are women you know just all that type of stuff absolutely and no one's feelings should be invalidated or erased or swept under the rug i get it trust and believe me but do you think right now at this moment when he's trying to run for city count right now while he's trying to get these votes in and stuff like that you think now was the time for him to just Okay, you think now is just the time? Now, I know him being upfront and honest would be a much better look than someone exposing him or it coming out later in a way that, you know, would make him look bad. I understand, but at this moment, <laughs> do you think now was the time? And you talking about you feel like a mistress. Baby, you knew what you was getting into when you decided to start hooking up with the man who's uh, portraying himself to be with a relation in a relationship with another woman and who is in this uh, status right now who has a lot of eyes on him. You knew what the risks were. I don't know why you thought y'all was going to be holding hands in the mall doing interviews together. I don't know why you thought that, ma'am. So the fact that she, kept, she keeps pressing it and she's so adamant and she keeps, uh, you know, stating I'm not going to be kept a secret. It's like baby if you didn't want to be kept a secret nor should you be but if you didn't want to be kept a secret if you didn't want to be moving on no hush hush type of stuff then you should have got with got with somebody who wasn't trying to be in the public office the city council and who ain't portraying himself to be with somebody else you all them red flags right there you should have just been like i'm gonna just leave you alone for a second i'm gonna go to somebody who can you know i can walk out in public with okay so fatima baby um while I understand why you don't want to be kept a secret, given all the circumstances, I, I, I got you, sis, okay? Um, I just don't know if I can trust you. I'm so sorry. Beautiful woman, don't know if I can trust you, okay? Can, do y'all think we can trust Fatima? I just need to know. Because my eyebrows are raising. Y'all see how thick these eyebrows is? And she's making me raise them. So, yeah. <laughs> So Tierra and Trick Victor, you know, the church service is over with. So they're kind of mingling and, you know, talking with the congregation and things like that. And one lady in particular, I believe they said Miss Peel, I believe, you know, an older church lady. She's like, oh, you and Tierra are such a beautiful black couple. Just the positivity that we need in this uh, community. I love to see it. I love what you're doing for us, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, Miss Peel, too bad it's fake. Uh, <laughs> child, this is a mess. But anyway. So, and then here comes Victor. I mean, no discretion, no no cute way to ask it. He's like, so if I run for city council, you're going to vote for me, right? I said, wait a minute. Trig Victor, we're going to work on your approach, baby. Tierra, put that in your notes. Work on his approach because, uh-uh, what we ain't going to do is kiss her hand. So, do I got your vote or no? Because... <laughs> trick victor please so as they're mingling and stuff like that papa's daddy he comes and he's talking to him and stuff like that they pose for a picture and trick victor excuses himself so he steps away and he goes to take a selfie and sends it to fatima like so how i look what you think and right when he's doing that papa's daddy comes in and talks to him and he's like so that's here you got you know she's she's the one she's a good one she got a good head on her shoulders she's no she knows what she's doing she's smart she's not she's easy on the eyes i just hope the rumors ain't true i said bitch your td jakes spill the tea <laughs> spill the tea the tea about Tierra, what you mean? I just knew T.D. Jakes was finna go in on Tierra. I just knew it. But he was like, so there's been some word on the curb, child. It's been some rumors circulating that you and Tierra are only doing this for show. I really hope it's not true. And I was like, well, Papa's daddy, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But I hate to rain on the parade. And I hate to bust the bubble. But here we go. That's me busting the bubble. <laughs> so later on, <clears throat> you know... 
uh, Tierra is going over Trick Victor's speech for this event that's happening later. So, you know, she's telling him, you know, to make sure you're making eye contact, make sure you're standing up straight. And he's like, now, how can I memorize the speech and read the speech if I'm too busy looking at folks? And she's like, that's why we're practicing, sweetie. Okay, so, oh, and before that, actually, they were in the car and basically they were just like man what are we doing well Trig is like you know what are we doing all this is fake like it's just too much going on like we're making all these promises and commitments and we're not even together and she's like i understand that but to the public we are don't you want these votes so listen to me do what i say and we're gonna be good oh and you didn't open up my car door okay always be chivalrous because you never know who's watching now drive the car. I said, Tierra, I know that's right. You better let him know. So then fast forward back to um, they going over his speech and practicing. So while they're doing that, his mother comes, Peaches, and he kind of freezes up a little bit and doesn't really want her to hear the speech because there's a part of his speech that's about her, about her overcoming her alco alcohol addiction. So he's kind of like, yeah, I don't really want to do this no more. Boom, boom, boom. So then fast forward to the actual event. He's giving his speech. Everything's all good. And right when he gets to the part that's supposed to be about his mother, he switches it and he makes it about Rashad, you know, how he was in the uh, prison system and how he's, you know, turned over a new leaf and, you know, going off into society as a new person and just trying to better himself. So all the round of applause went to Rashad. And Rashad like, now how, how did I get in it? What? What? Okay. <laughs> you know, so his mother's kind of like, hmm, interesting. Because you remember, she knows that that part was supposed to be about about her so while uh trick victor sierra you know some other people are talking she pulls trick victor to the side and she's like so i see you switched up your speech any reason why and basically he was like you know <clears throat> she was like uh trick victor's like you know i didn't want to just you know go out and say that you've overcome an addiction and i'm not even sure if that's really true basically and she's like oh so you think i'm gonna relapse and he's like, you know, I just wanted to see how the story ends before I publish it, basically. And he walks off and gives her the old church shoulder rub, you know, just in case there's a picture being taken. Hi. <laughs> I said, Trick Victor, please. So then later on, that's when her and Jake talk and stuff like that. Then fast forward to the part that almost had me lie. Because they showed this part in the preview for this episode last week. And, you know, it's when Roslyn is like, okay, so now for the real reason why we're here. I'm about to unveil something. I was like, baby. I just knew Trick Victor was fenced to get exposed. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know if it was because of the conversation that he had with Fatima. I just, I just don't know. I just had this feeling in my bone marrow that it was a picture underneath that little sheet. And it was the picture of them kissing, Fatima and Trick Victor kissing. Because y'all know they was up in the Jeep passing a blunt and kissing, baby. I just knew it was a picture. I knew it was a picture blown up, poster board size. So this is the man y'all want for campus. <laughs> this is the man that y'all want to vote for i just knew he was going to get exposed but that wasn't the case so she unveils this uh you know this uh image of the new upcoming rock center that they are building on so un totally unbeknownst to trick victor and trace they're like did you know about this because i sure didn't so right up under their nose so after they all clap for that trick victor goes to find Rosalind. he's like so how long y'all been plotting this and she's like boy mind your business and she walks off and she's trying and uh, trick victor's trying to you know follow after her and that's when jake kind of comes in to tell her tell him about Gemma. but uh you know trick victor disregards it and that's that so later on trick victor and uh tracy they're the only ones left they're talking and i hate i hate the way my mind went in this scene i'm really hoping i'm not the only one who thought this just because it was a really raw and emotional and vulnerable moment for both of them I don't know so they were just talking they were just questioning everything like these people have been doing this right up under our noses we didn't know anything we don't really have too much of a say since Rosalind Q and Duda have come and just taken over and they're just both like are we even fit for this are we you know cut out for what we're trying to do I mean what are we really doing and he's like am I cut out for city council like ugh. and you know they're confiding in each other and Tracy ends up telling him the reason she's the reason why Coogie got killed so he's like what are you talking about so she tells him the story of how you know uh there's him and Ronnie's 
but her and Ronnie's son got killed. She sent Ronnie to go after the dude that killed their son. He goes, he found Kugi because Kugi was, you know, wearing their son's chain and stuff like that. And assumed that Kugi was the one that killed their son. Ronnie killed them. And turns out it was a completely different person. And in retaliation, Bakari killed Ronnie because Ronnie and Kugi were best friends. So she just feels really guilty. And she's like, you know, I started this rock center because one to honor her son's legacy so I don't want to erase that part of it but she says like a good chunk of it is because of guilt y'all remember when Roslyn came back and you know she was like the girl the reason why you started this is because you felt guilty it's not because your son it's because you got that other little boy killed and you trying to cover that up and you know you did it out of guilt so Trace is like yeah that's kind of true you know I did it so people would think I'm a good person and he's like you are a good person so they're looking at each other baby I thought they was fins to kiss I, I hate I hate myself for that I really do because that would have been a mess that would have just been a mess okay had they kissed because you know she had her head on his shoulder you know they just rubbing each other i was like all right <laughs> but no but they just really needed an actual friend in one another and because they have three other people that are in this organization that's really trying to take over they really need to stick by each other and really you know have a solid support system with one another with one another due to everything that's going on so Oh, we're going to see how this works out, child. But then the next day, and this scene was so sad, but Trick Victor goes to visit his mom. I guess she's like in a center or rehab. I don't, I don't think it's a nursing home, um, but like a rehab center or recovery center, you know. And so the nurse is knocking on the door to like let her know that they're there and no one's answering the door. And I was like, now usually when people don't answer the door and they looking for people, it's like, okay, did they not show up? Are they there? Are they doing something that they shouldn't be doing? Are they alive? Like my mind was racing, okay? And so they open up the door and no one has been in there since last night. And so Trick Victor's just, you know, looking around her room and he sees a letter on her table or her desk rather. And it reads, um, I'm not sure how my story will end. And I was like, oh Lord. Cause remember that's the last thing that he said to her. But she's like, I'm not sure how my story will end. I just hope that my boys, Trick, Victor, and Jake, have a good memory of me as their mother. Like, sober, clean, good spirits, like in a positive way. And then she's, you know, wrote, see you soon. Now, see you soon could be, I'm just down the street. I'm coming back. It might be a couple weeks. I got to get my head together. I'll be right back. Or I will see you. You know what I mean? So I was like, Lord, with that mean Lena Leah, what, what does that mean? Let me know, okay? And so he sits on the bed. He's holding the letter. He's crying just because, of course, he doesn't. He knows the pattern that his mother goes through. But, of course, no one wants to see their mother down spiral. They for sure don't want to even think about their mother doing or going through anything worse or anything. So really raw, really emotional. And, oh, I kind of forgot about a little part. Um, it was about Jake and Gemma. Yeah, so they were just talking. And I guess she made a decision. And she was... You know, he was like, so are you sure you want to do this? Are you excited? Are you nervous? And she was like, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm excited. I'm sure I want to do it. Mm -mm. So I'm like, are you keeping the baby? Are y'all not keeping? Oh, okay, child. So we're going to see how that plays out. But what did y'all think about this episode? Like, it was pretty chill. I just have some suspicions about some folks. I'm so sorry. And listen, we're going to see how, you know, it really blows up with Keisha, Tiff, and Emmett in this next episode. I can't talk this next episode and all that good stuff so give me your thoughts and opinions down below and i will catch y'all in the next video i love y'all bye